All right, guys, welcome back. For our last example concerning use reducer, we will be fetching data from an API endpoint. If you can recollect, we have already had a look at data fetching with the use effect hook. However, with use effect, we were using the use state hook. This time, though, instead of use state, we will be using the use reducer hook. Remember, both use state and use reducer are used for state management. So what I want to do is compare and contrast how we use them both for data fetching. Which is why in this video we will go over data fetching with the use state hook and in the next video we are going to do the same with use reducer. In both the videos the scenario remains the same. As soon as the component mounts we will make an API call to fetch data. While the data is being fetched, we will show a loading indicator. When the data is fetched successfully, we will hide the loading indicator and display the data. If there was an error fetching the data, we hide the loading indicator and display an error message. All right, with these points in mind, let's begin. The first step is to install the Axios package. In the terminal, run the command npm install axios. Next, I'm going to create a new file called datafetching1.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a functional component. Now, let's begin with our imports. We need use state for managing the component state and use effect for the side effect. For making the HTTP call, we need Axios. So import Axios from Axios. The next step is to define the state variables required for this data fetching component. For our simple scenario, we need three state variables. A loading flag to indicate the data fetching happening in the background. So loading, set loading, and the initial value will be true. The next variable is an error message to display an error if something went wrong. Error, set error, and the initial value will be an empty string. And finally, a variable to hold the post which we will be fetching from an API endpoint. Post, comma, set post, and the initial value is an empty object. All right, now that we have the state variables, the next step is to make the API call and set the appropriate state. For side effects, we use use effect. It accepts an arrow function as its first parameter. And for the second parameter, we pass in an empty dependency array to ensure our API is only called once. That is, we want the component did mount behavior. Now within the arrow function, we make our get request. Axios.get For the endpoint, we will again be using JSON placeholder. So go to JSON placeholder .type .com and scroll down to routes. And we are going to pick the endpoint that returns exactly one post. Click on the link and copy the URL. Head back to VS Code and paste the URL as a parameter to the GET request. Now when the get request is made, a promise is returned. So let's add a then block and a catch block. If the request is successful, we make three state transitions. First, we set loading to false. Set loading. Next, we set the post variable to response.data which contains the post object. Finally, we set the error message to empty to clear any previous message, if at all they were being displayed. Set error, an empty string. 
Now our request might not succeed all the time, so let's add code in the catch block as well. Again, we first set the loading flag to false. After that, we set the post object to an empty object to hide any existing post that might be displayed in the browser. Finally, we set the error message to something went wrong. For the last bit of code, let's take care of the JSX. If at all the component is busy loading the data, we are going to display the string loading. Else we are going to display the post title, post.title. However, if there is an error, we also need to display that. So if error, display error, else return null. And that is it. Let's save the file, include it in app.js and test it out. You can see that when I refresh, the string loading appears for a fraction of a second and then the post title is displayed. And if I were to enter an incorrect URL, the error message gets displayed. The code is working as expected. If you go back to the code, what I want you to make note of is the way we are using useState. We have declared three variables and depending on the API returning a successful response or an error, we apply the appropriate state transitions. In the next video, let's see how to achieve the same with useReducer. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.